Some areas of greater Minnesota are experiencing both economic growth and a housing shortage, causing difficulties for workers to find affordable places to live. Joining me to talk more about this issue is the chair of the Senate Agriculture, Rural Development and Housing Finance Committee, Senator Tori Westrom. Welcome. Good to be here. Thank you, Shannon. The story used to be that people were leaving greater Minnesota because there was a lack of jobs. Now there are jobs, but a lack of affordable housing. What are some of the factors that are contributing to this lack of affordable housing? Well, it's several things, and uh, one of the things greater Minnesota has uh, always wrestled with is uh, having enough housing stock and uh, enough jobs to keep uh, people there and, and growing. Uh, but usually it's cheaper houses that you can buy in greater Minnesota, but building costs for new construction, whether it's in the metro area or rural Minnesota, are about the same, and so oftentimes it's uh, uh, too big of a gap between the cost of new construction and existing housing, but as you've indicated, when communities have a great a blessing of jobs, uh, they sometimes find themselves in a real severe housing crunch. Well, and I also read that in some areas, uh, there's been this move to have people age in place, and so we have rural Minnesota in particular has an older population. So there's a demographic thing, and these people are aging in place, and therefore young families can't go in and buy these older homes. Is that right? Th that is another scenario, and part of the independent living that most are interested in. The legislature uh, pursues those policies because it's usually the most cost-effective way, and most people want to live independently as long as they can, and with. Uh, aging in place uh, options with uh, visiting nurses and, and other care caregivers. Uh, those people aren't always retiring and moving out of their house into a uh, an apartment or into another assisted living as soon. And so that's often the stock that helps open up for younger uh, families, younger people that are moving in. So that also is creating a little bit of the, of the crunch. So what proposals do you expect will move forward this session that will help tackle the, the housing crunch? Well, last year, uh, coupled with this year, uh, we've certainly put uh, millions of dollars into housing, doll uh, housing uh, programs to help uh, match some dollars or give communities uh, grants to help build affordable housing or other workforce housing. The challenge grants was something we funded last year, but that was a two-year biennium. Uh, this year, we are continuing to look at policies to change. Uh, and promote more affordable housing and uh, workforce housing. One of, the, one of the things we're doing is uh, changing or proposing is to change the use of uh, housing infrastructure bonds through the Minnesota Housing Finance Authority and so they could, would use them more for manufactured home parks which is a very affordable uh, way of, of uh, housing and uh, helping them with infrastructure and uh, improvements so those parks aren't in jeopardy of closing but rather can see improvements that oftentimes people don't see and that, and that leads to a closure. The other thing is uh, uh, allowing housing infrastructure bonds to be used for senior housing, uh, so new new properties and new uh, apartments and, and houses for seniors, uh, senior living would be part of what developers could access, especially in rural areas where the dollars are tighter, but across the state that would be a new use for housing infrastructure bonds. I. Uh I heard in committee that there are some specific challenges, in particular for cities under uh, 10,000 population. What are the specific challenges for that demographic of town? Well, those smaller towns uh, face the, the gap, I will call it, uh, much greater than bigger towns. Uh, regional centers across the state and the metro area uh, generally see uh, new, new construction and uh, properties that will sell upon being constructed can be sold for uh, at cost or greater than what it costs to build them. In rural communities, smaller than 10,000, that becomes a bigger gap. You can build a house, a new house, for say $200,000, but it may only bring 150,000 on the market. That might be the only uh, level of income and jobs in the area that, that people are able to pay to buy that house. And so that gap is a problem and it stops new construction unless there's some uh, investment and additional dollars from the state and that's one of the focuses. So in our bill that we're, we passed through the Housing Finance uh, Committee this year would take pool three dollars from the Minnesota Housing Finance uh, Agency and uh, those are dollars that they uh, make off of return from, from mortgages and things that they 
uh, give out to first-time home buyers and the, the gap money that they make, or the spread they call it, um, we, we directed that 10% of those dollars would be reinvested into uh, communities up to f single family homes, up to fourplexes in communities that would uh, be built in those rural communities under 10,000 because that gap is so great. How much do wages play into this? Because you said, you know, it would cost 200000 to build a house, but the wages of the area maybe could only support the value of the house at 150000 So do wages need to be higher also, do you think? Well, you often see uh, wages go up as there's more and more job opportunities. Uh, that's just one factor. Uh, there's other factors in uh, rural communities. Uh, many times we're finding the uh, public infrastructure costs are so great on such a few number of, of uh, residents, if you will. So to, to build a, a 20 or $50 million improvement to the wastewater plants, uh, those turn into uh, 100, 150, up to $190 a, a month in water bills that I've heard, uh, we've heard through committees. And so that's greatly different than a 20 to $30 a month average in the metropolitan area. So there's, there's, there's other offsetting expenses. Uh, so there's expenses. infrastructure costs for those smaller communities that are really affecting the cost of living? It, that also factors into it. And so you've got higher, much higher monthly costs and you factor that into a mortgage, and uh, and and just generally wages ha are lower in rural areas. But you know that's not everywhere. Uh, Thief River Falls, for example, has a huge hard ho housing shortage, but many uh, strong job opportunities uh, with DigiKey and some other uh, strong employers that have really grown in the last uh, decade. Um, that's a great problem to have, but it is a serious problem, and so that's why we're looking at other affordable housing uh, opportunities and you know manufactured home parks uh, has gotten a lot of attention the last couple of years here at the Capitol and this year again as I mentioned the the changing the housing infrastructure yeah, bonds. Yeah we heard but, that in committee. You know part of the problem is those parks close and we we for 10 to 20 30 thousand dollars with strong investments in infrastructure and improvements for those parks you can maintain those or grow them or promote them more and that's that's probably the best stretching of the dollar of the taxpayer dollar for for the for the families and, and opportunities so we want to make sure that we are looking at the most cost effective ways to expand some housing opportunities mind you these are oftentimes first time uh, home buyer or mm -hmm. first starter homes and and so uh, but we want to let people get on their feet and uh, give them those opportunities and and build some equity in in their property and then you know, move move up and improve their housing situations as as they uh, can continue to afford uh, through through their jobs and, and and building wealth. Senator Westrom, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Great great to talk about this topic because uh, it affects everyone on all corners of the state.